Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to NJPW Poodle Dust Review. I am your co host, Andre C. Right over here, it's the strawberry margarita workout princess herself. It's Melball. How you doing, Melball? <laughs> I am doing all right, Andre. I'm feeling a little, a little icky today. I think I might have picked something up in our outing on Friday. There were a lot of people out there. I was doing a lot of shit. Mm. It was all kind of crazy cupcakes. But uh, my pre-workout, wrestling inspired today. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And it's strawberry margarita. And as Andre and I were pondering before we came on here, does this make me an alcoholic? I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> a strawberry margarita flavored pre workout first thing in the morning before <laughs> and enjoying it. Like, it is a fantastic pre workout, but man, I'm concerned now. Yeah, the other cool. one that I have is a sangria. Ah, ah, ah. I think I have a problem without having a problem. There's no tequila in it yet. Yeah, there might be by the end of the day if it makes it. You might need it after this show's over. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Dealing with my dung today. Yeah, absolutely. How are you doing, my friend? Mr. Well. Birthday Boy himself. Yeah, it was my birthday on record the Sunday with my birthday on Saturday. I did the live stream with Ed on my birthday, talking some Marvel. I got a live stream with uh, our boy Mark Talks, whose birthday it is today as we record this. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to Mark Talks. So we're going to get together and talk about me, I guess, on on uh, on his Mark Mark Talks show tomorrow. Yes, on his interview series, show. yes. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> does, he yeah. really know that much, does he really know that much about me? That's the question. He's going to. He's going to because he oh. talked to yours truly. Looking for questions and responses. Did, did you put him in touch with Mike? <laughs> uh, no, but I asked, I, I think I asked some Mike level question. I was going to say, Mike could be the person that, out of anybody now, now that could, anywhere near connected to him, would be the person that knows me better, like of the old me, anyways. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I, would like say, I would say so, yeah. 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 <laughs> Shout out, Mike the Ref. Like we saw rest. on Friday. Yeah. Oh my God. We're gonna talk about that when we talk on the on an exhibition of Chopped Up. But Mike yeah. the Ref made a human form appearance at oh. a wrestling event. Wow, dude. He hasn't been to a show since January when we were at the LPW Oil Kings Oil event, Kings, yeah. and since that was the year before in June for the mm -hmm. first ever Effie event at at Top Talent. Correct. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Mike in human form. It was awesome. <laughs> it was a full body apparition. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but we'll talk, we love you, Mike. We'll talk more about that on Shop Talk coming up yes. on our Top Talk, our Top Talent, not Top Talk, Top Talent Review. Top Talk, Top Talk, Top Talk, Top Talk. Where we got to see the <laughs> wonderful Dalton of Indeed, Jack versus Weston King as the main event. But we'll mm -hmm. talk about that later. We're here to talk some Japanese fresh and wrestling days 11, 12, and 13 from last week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday shows. Yes. Um, I'm, ooh, an easy, easy match of the year contender match here that was on day 12. Mm -hmm. And even day 13, there is mm -hmm. a stellar bout that you happened to pick on that show. So, so yeah. we're going to get into it. But before we do that, I want to thank each and every one of you. Thank you all so very much for joining us here. <laughs> Uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below because we love hearing from you. Everybody, very Z, Joe Demetrius, keep coming in hot with all the comments. Throw your comments and I will shout you out on here. Uh, and don't forget uh, to share us out to all your friends, family, and just crazy little weird people who happen to run through bushes. And don't forget to hit a notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. Hello. Who is running through bushes? Nobody. I just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's my brain. It doesn't it doesn't work right? So <laughs> happens when we get older. Sorry, should have warned you about that. So we're gonna get yeah. That's what happens when you turn thirty seven, I guess. Mm -hmm. We move over and we're gonna talk about some G one climax. Um, 
We kick it off with day number 11, A block matches. And this is the week of Chris Charlton on, on this week. We had Chris Charlton back for all three days. I was I was like, Chris Charlton for three straight appearances. I was like, yes, let's go. The team is yes. I was liking it. I was liking it. I'm thinking that I may have watched a day. I did. Okay. For uh, the the day fourteen, we got a different person. Day yeah, I'm gonna be. I'll be watching that uh, later today. So. Yes, I watched that last night. Nice. nice. <laughs> so we kick it off with the Great Ocon versus Callum Newman Battle of the Empire Part Two. Because we had uh, Cobb versus Hanari, now we're having Khan versus Newman. I thought really good, good, and, and I like it's two guys that know each other very well and it, how they flowed together. I really like mm -hmm. it. Uh, the end of this match, though, it, uh, Khan with a beautiful reverser of the Oz cutter into the Sheep Killer turns that into the Flatliner, and Khan finishes it with the Eliminator mm -hmm. to eliminate. Callum Newman from the tournament officially. Irony. Irony in the name there, hey? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was a, a really great um, match in that, as you mentioned, like the two of them just flowed so, so well together. Mm -hmm. Ocon, ever impressive with his ability to just adapt to whoever he is wrestling with, and Callum really just showing off everything that he's capable of doing and Ocon equally being showed off in this match. This was a really fun one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there was a great spot in here where uh, Newman went for the tornado kick, but like Khan just grabbed his arm and arm dragged him right through it. Yeah. I was like, Oh, great counter. And he does a similar thing uh, on night 13 with, I think it was Sonata. Yeah, I think, I think so. it's Sonata. We, we'll talk about that on there. It, dude, cool. when he countered the Shining Wizard, it was some really cool stuff here. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I Khan has some really cool counters. Same like Chuck Saber Jr. They mm -hmm. have, they both are very in that built in that technical aspect that they can counter all these moves from weird angles, and I really like it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. So we move on to Melball's pick. <laughs> Not surprised here, Jake Lee. Versus Gabe Kid, um, Lee, bringing the beers to the ring to have beers together after the match. Mm -hmm. You know, the boys, the, they're, they're part of the bullet club. They're dogs. Right? They're dogs for real. For real you know? <laughs> well, it's not a, it's not this anymore. It's this. They they hit back of the fist now. I know you could be. <laughs> Why? Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my so much easier. So much easier. Oh my Oh my face. God. It's a good thing oh. there's not an audio version of this show going out. Because be, people would just be like, what the hell is going on? What, yeah, what's going on right now? Holy jeebus, Murphy. Holy too funny. jeebus. Too sweet, oh. too funny. <laughs> Ugh, plain water. You're, sugar. You good, sir? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so they bring beers down and he goes, he puts the beers on the cor in the corner and he goes, get up and leads in there and kid just boots him off the apron. They end up brawling on the floor, kid attacking mm -hmm. Lee with a sealed chair. Um, ends up getting out of the way. Uh, Lee ends up, uh, or kid throws a table, but he gets out of the way and he ends up dropping kid with a punch. Uh, he hits kid with a chair. They brawl in through the crowd into the stands, going literally through the people, like through the rows, too. Not even like around in the in the like the main walk here, they went through the rows. I was like, okay, it's chaos, yeah. Uh, and this is the venue. It's Corkin, so it's it's got that raised seating venue, mm -hmm. and you've seen some really cool stuff uh, in the venue. And they're up on the walk, the upper walkway in between the crowd. And uh, Lee gets a giant killing knee. They brawl back to ringside. Lee running uh, kid head first into the table, leaving a dent in it. Like, uh, listen, 
was it Finley and somebody years ago just put I remember that somebody slamming somebody's face into there and putting a dent in it in a new defense. Juice. Show. Juice. That was it. And just the 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 Grin Finley was still a face. He juice put Finley's head into the table and it just dented it. No, it was Juice's face that went into it, remember? Oh, it was Juice's? Okay, yeah, one of the two that faces. was when he cut his forehead, when he, he cut the first little, yeah. I remember yeah. that, because that was such a cinematic gold moment, because the camera was right in front. It, it Juice's face hit, and you know how animated Juice is with his facials. It's just, it was the all perfect. The, all those facials. And did you not hear the chant that Kat and I were doing on Friday? No. Hmm. We'll talk well, about was, that on Chalk it, it, it was very loud in that place. Like It was hard to hear. <laughs> we were directly behind you, but it was very loud. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, they end up getting back in the ring. Uh, the kid gets a nice lariat for two. Is that the when the battle also started? <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. It, now the match officially starts. Uh, mm -hmm. And, yeah, the strikes between these two were just insane. But nothing compared to Night 13. But man, these were insane. This uh, was a precursor, we'll say. Yeah, uh, uh, Lee gets a choke slam early on in the actual official match. Uh, mm -hmm. it just just the back and forth, man. With the strikes in here, kid getting a ripcord into a freaking slap. And he has j just been absolutely on fire this tournament with his strikes. Like just landing every single thing, thudding it. It just his strikes have been so good. He has been the prime definition, Gabe Kid, of British strong style in this tournament. Yeah. So they uh Lee ends up hitting a face break shot on the rope, sending Kid to the floor. They brawl on the floor. Lee hits a German. Uh Lee hits a drop toe hold the kid into the barricade at 18. And he dives back in the ring at 19, and Kid is counted out. Yeah. They end up doing the, the back fist. Mm -hmm. Audience <laughs> that way. As a sign of respect after the match. And my question is, does Lee get a shot at the Strong Openweight Championship in America at some point in the fall? I sure hope so, because I would love to see these guys go again. I was a hell of a freaking match. I would love to see it going for something other than G1 Climax points. Because if that match was that good already, and it was just for points in the G1, could you imagine how much these two would step up even further for the NJPW Strong World Championship? Hell yes. Give me that. Absolutely. Fracking Um Yeah, it's smart bastard, man. I'm telling you appropriately named and what an acquisition for bullet club war dogs and to see them be able to have this intense of a match and be cool afterwards like we've seen the guys in bullet club do the the post-match stuff um beforehand more during the cup or the or the super juniors in the undercard stuff we would see them kind of hesitantly like yeah okay especially with like chase chase and um kenta mm. ishimori there's definite hesitation there whereas these guys they had an all-out brawl and they're like yeah cool so you have to for beers like it was it was totally an interesting oddly interesting sportsmanship <laughs> match without being a sportsmanship match at all because <laughs> they were beating the shit out of each other they were taking it outside and that would arguably be non-sportsmanship but it was so just poetically perfect that has been my word a lot in this g1 is poetic yeah because there's just been such great stories that suddenly come out of nothing these guys are working really really hard to make this tournament so much more than just pairings of, of people like there's not to say that there isn't matches like that but there's a lot of work by the more experienced wrestlers happening in this tournament to put over stories that are just kind of created and to put over either new wrestlers or established ones like Gabe Kidd who are already here and have been grinding for a hot minute mm -hmm. yeah 
Yeah, Thank you again. for coming to my Melball Talk. <laughs> again, amazing. So we move yes. on to the shortest match in the G1 this year. And legitimately, my most entertaining match of the G1 this year <laughs> is Zack Sabre Jr. versus Evil. So yeah. Evil, uh, Dragon Zack Sabre Jr. out to the ring. They attacked him backstage. Mm -hmm. uh, they end up hitting the him and the little dick, hit the magic killer to him in the ring. Match gets started. Evil's just repeatedly pinning Zack Sabre Jr. for two. And he's getting more and more mad. And he, is at, he gets a pin. He gets frustrated with the ref. And then all of a sudden, Sabre gets a sunset flip. One, two, three. It's over in 19 seconds. Yes. Yes. And Sabre does his escape, runs up the stairs into the crowd, starts celebrating. And then Evil and his little dick just go chase. <laughs> go chasing saber around and there's a young lion chasing after them and it was, it was if if all i could imagine was those old like british uh, shows where it's like doo, 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 doo. <laughs> like scooby doo that was all yeah. i could think as a hallway scene of scooby doo where zack saber jr runs from one door to the other and the evil in togo it was so good and then eventually <laughs> Saber comes out, goes into the crowd, gets a British flag, and goes back to the entranceway. They start doing the tour, like the matador, to like Toro, like or like Ole, whatever the hell they say. I don't know, Toro, Toro, Ole, 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 Ole. Whatever. whatever it is. And he's doing that. Then he runs to the back with the flag. It was just, it was perfection. It, it was glorious. It was yeah. absolutely glorious. And and couldn't have happened to a better guy on evil. I yep. mean, we knew he was going to have a downfall, uh, especially seeing how dominant the start to the, his tournament was. Um, been on a bit of a downward spiral since picking up that first loss. Mm. And and I couldn't be happier for oh, it. <laughs> Thank too. you, Gato, for fixing it. Um, yeah, this was entertainment, cinematic gold. I loved it. Yeah. Pure comedy, pure awesome. Yeah. Uh, so we, we that match, we did the entire match for you on that one. So, I uh, we move on. Tetsuya Naito versus Show Ta Uno. Actually, a really good. I think a really good, strong match from both men here. I think they worked really well together. Uh, towards the end of the match, uh, cro the the crossroads by Uno and then he falls over the inverted DT. They keep calling the the inverted twist and shout, and I hate that because the twist and shout is from the suplex position, not mm -hmm. from inverted DT position. My dick. Um. Uh. Yeah. Naito stops the suplex, hits, and he ends up hitting a brain buster. Umino stops Destino into the Fisherman Buster, Death Rider. Stuff. Like, he picked him up like Fisherman Buster style, but then hooked the arm and brought him down like DDT style. It was like a Fisherman Buster Death Rider. It looks mm -hmm. so good. Mm -hmm. I, I was like, that should have been the ending. Mm -hmm. uh, he gets to Umino, hits the Blaze Blade, and, he, and like, he lifts him up and starts spinning at that swinging Death Rider mm -hmm. for two. And then they each are, then uh, uh, he only has two. Naito goes for a Destino, it's reversed into Death Rider, which is reversed uh, back into Destino. But as he's up for Destino, he does it up and roll around, bringing Umino into the small package or the Destino package for the win. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice little quick end for him. Yeah. yeah. He's done, he's won the one, ma a few matches now with that little Destino package. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And I feel like this was, um, I don't want to say an easy match on him, but certainly in the grander scheme of things that Umino has been dealing with up until this point, this mm -hmm. match was not as groundy poundy as as he's been dealing with. So I feel like this was a, a little bit easier on his, his hip injury there. Yeah. But we are seeing a lot more tape kind of creeping up that lower back slowly. I am really hoping that after this G1 that Umino is able to to kind of rest up that hip and come back, you know, back at, at an actual 100%. Well, he'll get his about, Delulu 100%. He'll get about three weeks before the uh, the, the, the next uh, <clears throat> tour starts in, at the start of September. So I, I hope I hope he rests up though, because yeah. you know, some of these wrestlers they'll just train yeah. right through those injuries, and we see what happens when that happens. 
because they have announced Road uh, Destruction in Kobe on September 29th, and that tour starts yeah. on the 6th. Yeah. Uh, then you have uh, the King of then you have the King of Pro Wrestling tour starting, which also includes the Yuji Nagata uh, anniversary show in there, the 40th mm-hmm. anniversary Yuji Nagata event in there. Uh, which mm-hmm. King of Wrestling then is on the 14th of October, mm-hmm. and then they announced Super Junior Tag League, which ends at Power Struggle on October on uh, on November 4th. So, oh dear, yeah, glorious, glorious chaos, glorious, glorious chaos. Like at least they'll get a break in October, October and early <laughs> November. Super Junior Tag League. He he would definitely need it um, to to rest up that hip. Very concerned about that. Oh, and something super positive about Super Junior Junior Tag League. There's only not, including Power Struggle, which has the finals. There's only nine events in total. Interesting. So I think we're getting only going to be getting about eight or nine teams in it this year, in one block. I'm okay with that. I am too, but I also love these tournaments as an opportunity, um, as evidenced by Jake Lee, as evidenced by Kanosuke Takeshka. I love it as an opportunity, and a J in stardom. I love it as an opportunity to get more exposure to more mm. tag teams. And we do know that in NTPW in particular, both in its junior division and its world division, they're struggling. They are struggling for tag teams. So I'm curious to see who it is that they can throw t- throw together at this point to try to combat the, the Bullet Club War Dogs and Catch 2-2. Um, yep. You know, uh, other than those two teams, especially for the junior division, I'm, I'm struggling to, to, to come up with another team that I think could be in the Super Junior Tag League. So I'm, I'm interested to see who they use to fill those blocks. ABC. Yeah. ABC. It's the easiest. Well, the problem with the ABC is they're now in partnership with uh, new uh, with WWE in TNA, so that might not work out. Oh, I forgot about that. So we move on to the main event. My pick for the show, even though truly oh. my number one pick was Zack Saber Jr. beating Evil, um, but because <laughs> there was barely a match there, I'm like, I gotta at least give it to a full on match. I'm giving it to Shingo Sonata, and you know me, I'm not the biggest Sonata guy, but I think. Shigo Takagi brings something out of Sonata, uh, mm-hmm. gives gives him a little bit of life, gives him a little bit of something to work with. And I thought these two, uh, Takagi was a great spot earlier, just popping Sonata up on his shoulders and like catch him on his shoulders and just off gut buster. I was like, just up, down. I was like, that looked really good. Um, simple yeah. but effective. Simple but effective. Takagi hitting the tw- uh, the Tanahashi twist and shout in here. Uh, Sonata getting the magic screw, kips up, but misses the Shining Wizard. Uh, Takagi starts with strikes, but Sonata, pop, Sonata pops him up onto the shoulders, and TKO looks really good. Um, Sonata backflips German at one point, hits a Shining Wizard to the back of the head. Uh, Takagi blocks uh, the another Shining Wizard attempt, but Sonata slips out of a dragon screw, hits the Shining Wizard, then goes up for the rounding body press for two. Only two. Uh, dead full stop. Takagi pushes Sonata into the ropes and just does just, again pop up into that Death Valley driver. It look, looks so good. Uh, Made in Japan is reversed into Deadfall, which is then reversed back into Made in Japan for a two. That sequence looked so good. They flowed very, very well together. Mm hmm. So the end of the match comes. Takagi's unloading with elbows. Sonata drops Takagi uh, with a strike and hits the Shining Wizard. Uh, Takagi fights back and it's it's an extra pumping bomber, as it was called on commentary. He goes for last of the dragon, but it's reversed <laughs> into Deadfall, and Sonata gets the win again. Amazing! I thought these two did so well together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they flowed very, very well together. And as you mentioned, uh, Takagi did bring something out of Sonata. We saw some extra expression. We saw some extra pizzazz, some razzle dazzle, if you will, coming out of out of Sonata um, in this match. And like maybe it was that there was a slight kind of history there with them being on um, Los Ingobernables de Japón for just a little bit of time, just a little bit, long enough to. I mean, maybe long enough to form a, a bit of a brotherhood kind of there. So it, it did help kind of build on the story there. But these guys had 
an incredible match together that the story wasn't even necessarily required. They just flowed so, so well together. Um, yeah, I don't have anything to add to this. So quickly, before we jump into the next day, I'll uh, give you a point. I don't have a point graph for this, but I have a point graph for the next few days. Uh, a block, Zack Sabre Jr. and Evil both on top five and two, but Sabre officially in first place over Evil with the the, uh, the tiebreaker decision there. Uh, you have Naito and Sonata each with eight points. Then you have Great Okan, Jake Lee, Gabe Kidd, Shota Umino, and Shingo Takagi all with three and four with six points. And then in last place eliminated is Kyle Newman with four points. Still impressive that he's got four points on there and then didn't come out with a zero like some have in the past. Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah, very, very and, impressive. And the and, wins that he picked up, too. Super and, impressive. And he can st he still has a chance <clears throat> to, to move up and get six points in this. Like, it's still possible. Like Absolutely. I know where he's at, obviously, because I know of what's happened on. Uh, we'll get there. What's we know what's happening in the next match. Yeah. Again, he still has oh. one more after after day thirteen. He has day fifteen to possibly get mm -hmm. another another win. So, pot. We move on day twelve of the tournament, uh, and we kick it off with Jeffka versus Oleg Bolton. My what was my kind of second place pick for this show? Bolton. Uh, Oleg. Oh, Bol Bolton Oleg. Man, why does I because I copy and paste stuff? I don't know. Paste. It's literally written right there. Yeah, but I'm reading my notes and I copy the and paste usually the match cards from uh cage match and it is in German and it gets translated so it, it flips it to Oleg Bolton for some reason, even though that technically is his legal name. I know it is Bolton Oleg in his wrestling game. I apologize. This is the battle of the Olympian level wrestlers. Both of these men have represented Guam and Kazakhstan in Olympic level wrestling. So I thought these two had a really great match. Uh, there's a uh, Cobb shaking off uh, the Bolton shake and yelling, that's my move. And gets his help gets a whole uh, Hawaiian shake in this match. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bolton did eventually get his Bolton shake though. Yeah, he ended up dodging a lariat, hits a German, he picks him up. Just because Cobb only could get two Hawaiian shakes off. Bolton got it's four true. Bolton shakes uh, and, true. And, and tosses Cobb across the ring. Um, yeah. Dude, it was great. Uh, at the end of this match comes though. Aloha Maker gets signaled, but Bolton reverses into the Kamikaze, but Cobb kicks out at 2.9999, like that last possible so millisecond. Much. I thought it was over there. I'm like, I thought they I were getting Bolton there. Um, Bolton fires up, goes for Kamikaze again, but Cobb slips out of this one. They start smashing into each other with lariats. Cobb hits the thrust kick, follows with the lariat, the huge, like, like an extra pumping Hawaiian slap smack or something. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> I don't know what to call it because it's a pumping bomber. The extra, the extra Hawaiian smack, whatever you want to call it, and drop Bolton with the with the lariat. Um, he picks him up. Tour of the Islands for the win again. Really good match. This was mm -hmm. well, the match that we were. Uh, it was either we just talk about one match on this show that we both wanted to pick, mm -hmm. or we throw matches this was like my third place on this show <laughs> like i felt that this this show and the uh the 13th were difficult for me to pick favorites hmm. because each match gave something different and it just kind of got better and better and better as the night kind of went on um but yeah this match was super fun it was the the battle of the big men and I felt that there was like a fun level of just respect, mm -hmm. mutual respect of these two, where it was like just like a nice little fun show off match for how strong both these guys were. And I, the more I've heard it throughout the tournament, the more I'm really starting to believe it because I'm starting to see it. I really don't feel that Bolton knows how strong he is. I feel like he is still unlocking. Like he's he's in a perpetual state of leveling up each match that he does. And he unlocks more and more strength as he goes. Because if you had asked me at the beginning of this tournament, if we could see Bolton yeeting Jeff Cobb across the tournament or uh, across the uh, the ring, I'd been like, mm, 
maybe. But as the tournament has progressed, that maybe has turned into a quite possibly into a full on frickin' yes. So yeah, it's we're seeing this slow character unlocking of Bolton that I'm kind of living for. And it's not taking away from anybody that he's wrestling. It's so great. I love watching these newer wrestlers gain so much experience from wrestling these guys in. and like so good. Same thing with Callum. We've seen him, like how good he is slowly being unlocked in this tournament. I love seeing that growth. Mm -hmm. Me too. Again, mm -hmm. it's, it's just, it's amazing. And while he is not young, he's 31 years old. The guy has so much ability behind him in this technical mm -hmm. aspect of training in Kazakhstan for so many years. And he's just showing how good his natural talent is just being in the span of what, a year and a half ish. Yeah two years since he joined the dojo and how good he is being a featured member now on the roster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So we move on to my third match of the year contender list that at the, from this, from this tournament, the match that me and Mel both, I think both wanted to pick as our match of, of, the, of the night. So we decided to just each pick our other matches mm -hmm. and give this its own little highlight. Uh, mm -hmm. El Phantasmo versus Kenosuke Takeshita. Oh my god. Wow. Yeah. Just wow. Take us into it, Andre, because just oh. wow. Because like this is a revenge match, if you really think about it, from uh that it, it's almost a revenge from that blue thunder bomb off the apron through the table at uh, Forbidden Door. That's what this is coming out of. Like that's kind of their setup. And that's what took El ELP out of that match. Right, mm -hmm. so just the striking, the the kicks with each other, they're just going at each other so hard. Um, mm -hmm. Takeshita misses that power drive knee in the corner, ends up like going over, like, jumps for that power drive knee, oh. hits the turnbuckle, and just topples over. It looks so good. Mm -hmm. So, uh, ELP hits a beautiful tope soup, Sita to the floor, he mm -hmm. goes up, hits the moonsault off the top. To Takesha, who's now on the other side of the barricade in the crowd. He go in, they go into the crowd with the moonsault. It was crazy, man. Just looks so good. Um, mm -hmm. There's yeah. one thing we do have to mention, though, also, real quick at the beginning of this. The jacket. Mm, it was lit up. He lit up the jacket. Mm -hmm. Ah, I'm so happy. So happy. Yeah. Continue. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it's, it, it's, a, this is a different ELP here. Like, he's, he's, mm -hmm. So they fight some more. Uh, Kenosi ends up setting up a table on the floor. Uh, they're they're fighting. Um, yeah, it, it's just a great spot. Where they're, they, they end up fighting back and then kind of ignoring the table. But you're like, okay, maybe it's just going to happen later in the match. Some great stuff. Uh, power drive knee, but ELP stops a blue thunder bomb on the floor. Uh, Takesha goes to the top. ELP's up there. They're fighting up top. ELP with like elbows hits the Rana. Off the top goes back up for Thunder Kiss eighty six, but it's 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 that two point nine nine style kick out. I was like, ah, oh. and um, later a uh, ELP avoiding the poison Rana into his own just looks so good, uh, and he hits CR two, but again to cash it out of that two point nine nine nine, like just everything was so smooth. Mm -hmm. uh, they end up on the floor. ELP hits sudden death on the floor. Puts Takesha on the table. He goes to the top, but Takesha gets off the table. They end up fighting on the apron, and this is where Takesha gets him into Tombstone, brings the legs down, bastard driver off the apron through the Japanese table. But those ones are way harder. Um, to the floor. This also lacerated the back of ELP. He was bleeding <laughs> profusely from his back. In a couple of places, it looked like there was at least two or three cuts. Yeah, this was insanity here. Um, mm -hmm. So ELP does make it back in in 19. Uh, Takeshi with a hard elbow, but ELP reverses Raging Fire into a small package for two, then hits Sudden Death for two. Again, they're going back and forth. He goes, goes for Itabashi, that, that layover pin, but he couldn't get it. Mm -hmm. Um just the reversals from both of these two and into the uh, and then ELP gets a victory roll, but the catcher then rolls that through and hits a wheelbarrow German 
and then a lariat for two. A hits mm-hmm. a power drive knee, but ELP kicks out of that last moment. So Takeshita picks him up, raging fire. And Takeshita is your winner, eliminating ELP from this tournament. Mm-hmm. But holy shit, Takeshita even like, like, gives him like a clap after and gives him like a little hug on the mat. Like, mm-hmm. oh, it's impressive, man. Like, just. Yeah. This was. Like, up until this moment, I was concerned about seeing ELP again, like El Phantasmo. It had been a hot minute. You know, he was the man who lost his smile. This was the first match that I'd seen in this tournament where he got his smile back, where the crowd was, like, the crowd has been fully behind ELP this whole tournament, but it was this this match that he let them back in and let them support him again. And it was this beautiful match with the one of the hardest workers in this tournament in Kanosuke Takeshka. Holy crap. Um, this made me so happy to, to just see how 110,000% into this ELP was. It was just so amazing. Um, He was doing the head flips a little bit at the beginning there. You know how much I love those head flips. It's super impressive. It's so simple, but it's like not everybody has that strong of a neck. Not everybody is capable of doing that. So it's really, really cool to see. Um, There was also a a kip up that Takeshka did. Again, simple but effective thing. It looked so good, especially with how long Takeshka is. Sometimes that could look really awkward with like those taller long limited people doing that but he just is so perfectionistic with his moves uh the tope suicida by elp on takeshka followed by the moonsault into the crowd was just so crazy so good the blue thunder bomb by takeshka is ever impressive just the bounce that he gets off of everybody when doing that so assertive so good i love it just the reversal of that, like you, like it was ELP going for the tornado DT, and it reversed into that blue thunder. It looked amazing. Yeah, yeah. It just these guys were so good. They flowed so so well together. Um, Poison Rana by ELP and the CR two was just so good. The table spot was scary. I freaked out on that, and then seeing ELP bleeding after that point, I was like, Shaiza, mm-hmm. this is. This is Kenta and Hiroshi Tanahashi all over again for me. Um, when ELP hit the sudden death on Takeshka after the table spot, I thought it was done. And I was actually really excited for it. I really wanted this win for ELP. I felt that he deserved it in this one. Me too. Um, but I'm happy with what we got as a result. It was so yeah. good. So yeah. good. I think these two just absolutely killed it in this match. Oh, so, so much. So. So it does say Mott Lister. I put match of the tournament list. It enters the, yeah. the four matches I have. I now have four after night. Of, uh, we'll talk about my fourth. This, we'll is get my there. Third, this is my third one to enter the list. And this is all happening since day nine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this tournament has been fire. And there were some great matches before, but these ones are like the top, top matches so far. We'll yeah. talk about them at the end of the year and what you have to go back and watch if you didn't watch the whole tournament. Yeah, after night nine, it's kind of like you're getting into the, we're getting down to the wire. We need to secure those points mm. kind of sense of urgency matches, if you will. Oh, for sure. Oh. We move on to what is my pick because uh, we're both, uh, mm. we're not both, because we're having the match of the year, match of the tournament pick, and then there's this. Uh, Hanari versus Yoda Suji, these two just smashing into each other, beating mm. the out of each other, just trying to suplex each other, like just, uh, like uh, just a power side. And like Suji is very, is much, is taller than Hanari, but there's mm. such a power exchange here that it's just so good. Um, mm. Uh, Suji Rana's Hanari to the floor and hits a beautiful, like, corkscrew Topecon Hilo over the top uh, to, su- to uh, Hanari on the floor. Uh, back in the ring, Suji hits this beautiful looking gut buster for two. Um, Jin, it's just all the power in here. Suji, 
Uh, they're up on top at one point. Suji gets a super Samoan drop off the top. Look phenomenal. Uh, just the elbows from Suji when Hanari's firing up, nothing. And Hanari just drops him and just they trade kicks to the head of each other. More strikes and Hanari comes out of nowhere with a berserker bomb. <laughs> Just so much good stuff here. The Marlowe crash is missed at one point, and Hari just takes Suji's head off with a lariat. In the end of the match, though, they're smashing into each other repeatedly. Suji gets a knee to the head and another, but if this is like fires Hanari up, and Suji starts unloading strikes, and Hanari comes right back with his own strikes, gets the dreaded liver punch. Uh, Suji dodges out of the corner, hits strikes, and Hanari into the other corner. But Hanari comes right back out, picks him up, rampages him for two. He then hits the native knee in the corner, and they end up trading headbutts. Suji dodges a running knee and hits a gene blaster out of nowhere for the win. Incredible match. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. This one was like, it was a very interesting one for me, too, because there was a little bit of a story I felt in this one. Maybe it was just one that I kind of made up in my head. But Hinare was just coming out of his young lion time. He was out of excursion as Aaron Hinare um, when Suji was kind of going through his young lion thing. So it was interesting to see these guys kind of come back and the difference in path pathways, paths, pathways that they took to get to this point in meeting in the G1 Climax. Um, yeah, I don't have too much to add to this one. Yeah. I, again, I just saw a really strong match from the two of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We move on to a match that happened on this show. Uh, actually, probably the weakest match I've wa I watched on this night because everything else I've exceeded it by a good part. Well, this match wasn't bad. It, it, it never got into that gear for me. And then I think it really hurt by the fact that Kanemaru got involved in this and just yeah. things down for me. Cause they were having a really good match together. And then Kanemaru mm -hmm. had to get involved. Um, yeah. So the end of the match comes, uh, Narita ends up grabbing the ref, gets a low blow on Yuri Mura and gets a German for two. Narita ends up grabbing the ref again Kanemaru attacks, uh, but misses the Santori surprise. Yuimura sends him to the floor. Uh, Narita gets the push-up bar, but Yuimura kicks it out of his hands. Hits a dragon suplex for two. Uh, Narita shoves the ref into the corner. Kicks Yuimura in the cojones. Up kicks him in the face. And hits a double cross for the win. It disappoints me so much. Mm. Because we know what a competent wrestler Ren Narita is and the character development he has done with House of Torture has been so good but why why when you add more than one of House of Torture to the freaking ringside does it just go down the toilet it mm. sucks and I love Kanemaru I thought that Kanemaru was honestly one of the best requisitions that is that the right word Acquisitions requisite. He was one of the best people that that House of Torture could secure. He is the heel master. It was weird seeing him on Just Five Guys being a face when he's the heel master. It makes sense for him to be here. But arr, the House of Torture shenanigans remove from the quality of the match. They why Gato. You know the, the stardom connection. Watch some Oedo Tai. Please. Watch how Hate is doing their thing now. Not not Kamatani, because she's kind of she's kind of awkward. Um, but like watch how Momo and and Ruaka and Tora do their shenanigans. Those are the shenanigans done properly and at appropriate times in the match take mm -hmm. some notes yep. the, that's that's what i would rather see if the, it was done in an oedo time manner this would have been a lot better but it was done in a house of torture manner which made it torturous yeah very much so yeah. i don't know just yeah uh, 
I don't know. This one just it, it didn't quite ever hook me. It was a good match. But there was some good technical stuff. Narita working that knee bar throughout. Mm-hmm. But then Canamar just had to get involved, and it just took me out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Move on to the main event. Mel's pick. It's Haruki Kato versus David Finley. Um, Finley tape. Good bit of tape on his uh, left arm and shoulder now. Uh, starting yeah. to really build up there. Um, mm-hmm. Great reversals here. They end up on the floor. Uh, after uh, go after Finley hot shots at Goto and Russian leg sweeps him, he ends up uh, running him into the barricade and bites him in the forehead on the floor. Uh, they end up back in some good, really good stuff in the ring with these two. They, again, these mm-hmm. two just finally flow so well together. Uh, Finley biting at the fingers of Goto. I was like, ew, you don't know where his fingers have been. They touched don't you they put might, it in your mouth. Don't you they put might have it touched it in your mouth. They might have touched Yoshihashi. You don't want that. You don't want Yoshihashi germs. He was at ringside on commentary. Yeah, you don't want Yoshihashi germs, man. Don't don't bite Goto's fingers. It's gross. It's gross. <laughs> Maybe that's how you get, you know, the the G one, the G, in the G one stands for Goto. Maybe that's how you unlock his powers. Isn't there like an anime somewhere where if you like bite a certain thing, you like turn into a Titan or something and attack on Titan? Or, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's my what an- he was looking for. He was looking for his attack on Titan button. My anime knowledge is very limited. Yeah. Mine too. Help girl out. Yeah. Uh, great reversals. They're reversing each other's moves. Goto pushes Finley into the ropes and pops him up onto his shoulders and gets a beautiful Ushi Karoshi. Uh, they're trading hard strikes. Uh, Goto gets the inverted GTR in the Lariat. He goes for the full GTR, but it gets reversed into a crucifix for two by Finley. Um, uh, fin- Goto ends up dodging out of the corner. Finley gets run in and gets set up into the corner, and uh, he hits and Goto hits the one man show toe, but he only gets two. Uh, Finley reverses uh, the trash panda or reverses Goto into a trash panda into oblivion for two. He gets a buckle bomb and the power bomb, but can only get two. Uh, Goto ends up dodging the shillelagh that Finley had. Uh, and headbutts Finley, getting Shalevi and just goes, huh, and just tosses it out of the ring. Well, like he he gently yeets it. Like he he looks like he's gonna toss it, but then he drops it. He's yeah. he's not die jack. True. He does, <laughs> he's not he's not hitting fans in the heads with objects. Yeah. <laughs> no. Tune into uh, Chop Talk for more about that. <laughs> oh, go to gets a chest kick and then hits G T W. But he only gets two. Uh, GTR gets reversed into a backslide. But Goto stops an attack. Like uh, go, uh, Finley going for a move with a headbutt. Gets him in the GTR. Hammer locks the arm. GTR for the win. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Like, I, I knew. I knew that. Goto was going to kind of have like a Cinderella moment in this. I didn't think it was going to be against the global champion though. I honestly thought that they were, they were going to give this win to, to Finley, let him continue to be a loud mouth because the loud mouth is working, working. It's getting attention. Um, yeah. In the beginning of this on his intro, Finley antagonizing Yoshihashi at ringside. I'm not going to lie. Um, Yoshihashi looking a bit like a puss. Wouldn't even look at Finley. Kept looking down at the table, very much avoiding. I was like, dude, you fought this guy before. F him up. Don't sit there and be like coy about it. You've F'd this boy up. Look him in the face. Be a man. Come on now. Um, the one man Shota by um goto shout out to yoshihashi at ringside i liked i liked the little homage mm-hmm. um there was the back body drop that goto i think that's what it was the backdrop that goto did to finley on the exposed floor on the outside after finley had removed the mat did i call it right yes back body drop yeah. yes because i didn't hear the call on commentary so i just kind of guessed um the one thing I didn't like about this match, though, was Gato's persistent involvement. I didn't feel that Finley needed it. 
Um, it, it was kind of inopportune at times. The only time that I think that Gato should have actively been getting involved was the, the Shillelagh spot at the end. I feel I like everything else was was unnecessary um, because, again, like Finley and Goto, both very competent wrestlers. He wasn't necessary for the story or or the, the help for Finley at that point. Um, so I, I felt that it was it wasn't at House of Torture level of annoyance, but it was starting to get there for me. Um, yeah. And then the Shillelagh spot, I, I again, I, I appreciated the safe yeeting. Of the, the, the weapon yeah. at the end and i appreciated the win for goto because again i wasn't expecting it but i'm very happy that it did happen yeah i agree with you there mm -hmm. so Emo, I'm, oh what the hell did i oh i didn't put a graphic what am i doing i put the wrong i pressed the wrong way didn't i there we go <laughs> uh, buttons aren't working for me so at the end of uh, night number 12, B Block, Jeff Cobb, 5 and 2 with 10 points alone in first. Then we have a tie, a five way tie for uh, second place with eight points with Yoda Suji, Hiroki Goto, Ren Narita, uh, David Finley, and Kanosuke Takesha, all with eight points. But it, they did say online on Twitter that if the B Block had ended after night number 12, it would have been Jeff Cobb. In first, Haroki Goto in second, and Yota Suji in third place with through all the tiebreakers. Wow. I'm glad someone else did the math because goddamn. Yeah, I couldn't. I, I was trying to figure it out, but I'm like, I can't see how the tiebreak here, how the tiebreaks work. I could not figure it out. <laughs> There's mathier people in the world than us, Andre. Mathier yeah. people. Then Hanare and Yuyuri each with six points. And then eliminated from the tournament are El Fantasmo and Bolt Noleg, each with four points. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what a tournament. What a block. Block B has certainly been very exciting, hasn't it? And there's still two nights to go for this block. So, again, it, it, it anybody could be there. Like, Yuya and, and Hanare still have a shot at six points. Like, mm -hmm. any, like, how this eight point clump, along with Jeff Cobb, only with 10 points, he doesn't even have a guarantee right now to get in because mm -hmm. he could, he loses his last two and somebody beats him. Like, enough people beat him, he moved through. He could end up not getting in. And so it's like, it, it's anybody's block still. It's crazy. Crazy really? cupcakes. Crazy, crazy cupcakes. We're going to have to make some crazy cupcakes at this point. Yeah. Uh, night number 13, we kick it off with Tetsuya Night versus Callum Newman, LIJ versus United Empire. It, it, it's a battle that will never, ever end. Uh, good, I thought really good match. And I thought Newman got to really shine in here against Naito. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 100%. Um, some really nice super kicks throughout from uh, Newman in this match. He looked really good. Um, flying all over the place. Uh, though the end of this match comes, corner drop kick is missed, um, or corner drop kick, but uh, sorry, corner drop kick is hit, but uh, Newman misses off the top with the stomp, uh, and Naito hits a spine buster. He again gets elbows to the neck. Newman avoids Destino and uh, ends up get, like popping him up into like a knee strike. It looked really good. Yeah. Newman goes for the os cutter, but N Naito avoids it. Hits Desti, kind of, no, for two. Then goes and hits the full rotation. Destino for mm -hmm. the win. I think Walker's been calling it like a short Destino or a half Destino. Yeah, that's kind of what it is. Yeah. It's, like quick, it's those quick, like, like I remember Kevin used to say it's the running Destino versus the full Destino. Like, mm -hmm. he's... Destino, or the just when he runs up, he has a, you know, it's like too quick or something like that. Versus yeah, he can't get yeah. as much power or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, the only thing I wanted to add is that I, I thought it was fun that um, Callum kind of jumped Naito at the beginning there, not even allowing Naito to get his clothes off and uh, like running him through the gate, hopping over the gate. It was super, super impressive. Uh, sucked that Naito paid him back for all of that in full, but it was still a really fun way to start 
the, the match off with that high energy, high intensity. Great way. Great way to start off the uh, tournament part of the uh, the matches. Yeah, I agree. Again, it was just a fun little high intensity way to do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So we move on to Sonata versus the Great Okan. I think this is a really good, uh, strong match throughout. Like I said, there was a spot in here. It's like similar to Khan versus Newman, where Son uh, Sonata goes for the Shining Wizard, but Khan just catches the knee and just dragon screws him through with like a judo throw. Mm -hmm. Look, so good. So, mm -hmm. so good. Uh, the end of this match comes. Khan removes the knee pad on uh, Sonata, hits a knee breaker, but Sonata comes back with a TKO. He goes for the Shining Wizard, but Sh Khan just straight right punches him in the jaw. Mm -hmm. It's sick. Eliminator gets blocked into an O'Connor roll, but that's then reversed into a choke. Khan stands up with the sleeper, goes for the sleeper suplex, but Sonata flips over, landing on his feet, hits a Shining Wizard to the back of the head. Uh, Sonata hits another Shining Wizard to the face, goes for a deadfall, but it's reversed into the Sheep Killer, into the Flatliner, and into the Eliminator for the win by the Great O'Con. Mm -hmm. I was pleasantly surprised with that. Mm -hmm. Pleasantly surprised, especially because Sonata has been put on such a pedestal. And, like, not to say that he hasn't earned it, he definitely did with LIJ. It's just kind of been a slow kind of simmer for me since he did leave LIJ. Um, the great Ocon, though, I'm about to go on a small little rant. I'm trying to understand why the company's sleeping so much on this character. He's so good. He adapts to every style that is thrown at him and gives that person an incredible match, whether they have the personality or not. And Sonata has been making a lot of personality development in this, but I feel like Okan has been that personality since arriving and, you know, betraying Okada and joining the United Empire and Will Ospreay. We have seen him go through the heel stuff. We have seen him go through the face stuff. He is a complete package character. He is this Mongolian death lord character he's visually appealing and he can change his appearance so easily with just what he wears to the ring we've seen him come in athletic shorts we've seen him come in those cool mongolian pants we've seen him just in trunks we've like we've seen him in such a variety of things it's very obvious there's very little that he won't do why is he not being taken seriously? Why are we not seeing him a little bit more throughout professional wrestling? I agree. Like, why is his why is his ceiling so far been the KOPW title? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it's I I don't find that they're kenting him. Yeah, I agree. It's disappointing. Move on to my pick. Oh, well, well my pick was Mel's pick, so I picked this one. Oh. <laughs> you if you had that one i didn't want to i didn't want to take take your pick away from you so okay. I, I i want to be nice so i took this one because I, I i thought this match okay. was incredible okay. um umino jumping lee before the bell they brawl mm -hmm. lee escapes to the floor umino following they they fight in the barricade but uh lee whips him into the barricade sorry uh they cut but he comes right back to the drop kick uh lee reverses a whip sending umino into the barricade um, they, he gets a chair, hits him in the back. Marty starts yelling at Lee for hitting with a chair, but doesn't disqualify him for some stupid reason. I don't know. This is Marty. He's probably scared shitless. Yeah, I know. Throw some <laughs> balls, dude. Um, Lee gets goes for the Boston Crab the Ring. Umino fights it off. Uh, he ends up Umino goes for a drop kick and misses. So this is when Lee gets the Boston Crab, sits it down in deep, then transfers into the Lion Tamer variation. Then he goes back into the Boston Crab, sitting deep again, and Umino fights and fights, and he eventually does get to the ropes. I just love the switch out of there, like mm -hmm. between it. Or, excuse me. No, um, he's, he was very much working that lower back and and hips of Shota. You know, the change had to be very painful, and the change back had to be just as painful. He was really wearing Umino down there. Mm -hmm. 
Um, uh, Umino ends up uh, drop toe, toe holding Lee into the ropes at one point. It's that plancha apron DDT. Look, I like I like that move. It looks really good. Mm-hmm. Um, comes back in with a drop kick off the top. Hits a fisherman suplex for two. Um, Umino ends up catching and running <laughs> knee and drops uh, Lee with an elbow. Umino is stomping at him. Lee gets up. They're trading strikes. This energy just going back and forth, back and forth. Uh, Uno hits an exploder with Lee coming back with a German. Then Uno gets the blaze blade to the back of the head, and they're both down. Um, just, yeah, so Lee uh, get, gets him uh, up for a torture rack, and he just drops him. And Carlton says, he just dropped him like he was trash. He did. <laughs> And I immediately thought of you. I loved it. Uh, Lee then hits a choke slam for two. Um, Lee lines up face break shot, but Umino flies out with a blaze blade to the face. Uh, goes for a death rider, but it gets reversed with a giant killing knee. Lee hits kick, sends Umino into the corner, and Lee hits the face break shot to stay alive for the win. Yes. What a fun match this was. Mm. I felt this was actually a really solid match for Umino and an even more solid match for Lee. Um, Cause I felt that the way he was holding himself, like we've seen him come in with this confidence throughout this entire tournament, but this match in particular, I, his body language told me that he had 110,000% confidence in himself. The way he was just, sauntering around. He wasn't walking with intensity or, or, or purpose when he was going towards Umino to like grab him and stuff in the ring or outside. Mm-hmm. He was very, he was sauntering. I felt he was very visually overconfident. And given what happened, you know, obviously not unfounded in his confidence. Um, I like seeing this evolution of Lee. Um, he's, he's definitely been somebody that I started noticing since his feud with Tetsuya Naito, but now joining the War Dogs, it's kind of like adding another level of viciousness to your repertoire when you join Bullet Club War Dogs. I kind of live for it. I'm liking the interesting dynamic in joining whatever a Bullet Club affiliation kind of gets you because if you, you join house of torture i mean the benefit is you get some character work but you're annoying as fuck but then joining the war dogs you gain this intensity this almost ever ready for war mentality and jake lee is fitting in there just perfectly i love it yeah good pick so we move on to melville's pick of the show yeah and say is chops, 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 everybody chop, chop. There was a lot of chops. So it was definitely a go to. So they spent the first like good couple, a few minutes just kid chopping the hell out of Saber. Saber coming back with his own chops throughout, but kid is like 90% of the chops. Like literally a few minutes in, Saber's chest is turning raw. Yeah, his his chest was a different color than the rest yeah. of him through the entire match for sure. Yeah, and you could see the blood vessels all up on the chest. You're like, I wouldn't, I I would like to see a pic- if Saber got a picture of himself late the next day of what the oh, chest yeah, looked yeah, like. Yeah. Oh, like you know what else it. you noticed without with, with that went along with those chops is the look of annoyance on Zack Sabre Jr.'s face every time kid would smack him, he'd just be like, God damn it. Yeah, you know, oh, I'm sure it was a, the language in his head was a lot more com- uh, you know, colorful, but uh, the, you could see the expression on his face. Zack Sabre Jr. isn't always someone that you can read by mm-hmm. the expressions on his face either. He's usually quite stoic like his picture. He doesn't give away a lot, but in this match, he was giving away a lot. Very expressive. Well, and they were telling the on commentary telling a great story of how these guys faced in 2017 back when Kid was still in Rev Pro before he joined the do, the New Japan Dojo of Amer- in America, and yeah, dude, it was it's just telling the story of like how it's, it's an evolution. This is a very different Gabe Kid from the Gabe Kid that 
Saber did face back then. So I, I really like that little story they told there. There's some really cool stuff throughout this. Uh, Saber reversing the tombstone into a European clutch for two. Um, uh, Saber is like ties up the arm, stomps it, then flips and then brings him down again and stomps the arm the other way. And then, and then kid goes for a chop and then he chops him, but kid drops just in pain from his arm. I was like, I was just beautiful storytelling right there. Mm -hmm. Beautiful storytelling. Um, Saber gets a flying arm bar to kid uh, when he's going through a lariat, but kid ends up like kind of rolling through and picks him up with a German. Like just like, just great. Uh, Saber getting an octopus, uh, but kid reverses that into a tombstone for two. Just, just so much great stuff. Uh, so much good stuff here. Uh, uh, in the that towards the end of the match, show Saber stops a pile driver, and he goes for a gotch style pile driver, shouting out his his old mentor Minoru Suzuki. Um, but it get it gets stopped. I was a little disappointed it didn't get hit. Uh, mm -hmm. A kid goes for a move, but Saber reverses whatever he's doing into the Zack driver. Uh, Saber gets an enziguri, uh, and both are, both men start dodging each other. And that kid hits that rebound lariat for two. Looks so good. They trade shot. The tra trading slaps. Saber gets a sleeper. Kid escapes, but then he gets it back on. But then kid escapes again. But Saber gets a sleeper back on. Uh, kid, he's there, he doesn't down. Then he stands up. He's standing up, and he's like getting ready to fire up to throw Saber up. But Saber just like takes his legs, hooks them around the arms, pulls them back, and. He's got so much torque on the sleeper. Kid goes to his knees. He goes to the ground. And Saber puts Kid to sleep for the win. Mm -hmm. So good. So good. And Kid defiant until the end. When he stood up to try to fire up, he knew. I think he knew he was going to go down. And he just flipped off the crowd. Fuck all of you. Down he went. Defiant to the end, and I love it. Love it. Gabe Kid has gained. Like, he's still a Gabe Kid. He's still war ready. He's still that dick. Without being a dick to go, it's not a little dick. But he has earned so much of the crowd's respect in this tournament by just being who he is in war dogs he's found his stride he's found his niche he's found for the time who he's supposed to be in professional wrestling and zack saber jr in this match helped him build upon that even more um yeah the the chops at the beginning again as i mentioned you could see zack saber jr getting more and more annoyed each time that he was being chopped and kind of firing back a lot more stiffly than we usually see Zack Sabre Jr. fire back. Um, I think my favorite part, though, was the part where they sat down cross-legged in the uh, in the middle of the ring and kids just beacon at the the camera and he takes that first about Shibata, I think it was, and he takes yeah, he that yelled. first shot at uh, Zack Sabre Jr. Okay, okay, go ahead, go ahead. Well, he's yelled, Shibata, watch this! Yeah, so then he he hit Zack Sabre Jr. and the, Zack Sabre Jr. immediately answered back. The look on Gabe Kidd's face, I don't think he was expecting Zack Sabre Jr. to return the receipt <laughs> as as hard and stiff as he was. And the look of like there was a temporary bewilderment on his face before it was like it became, oh, okay, this is what we're doing right now. Okay. And the the shots that started going back and forth were just so perfect. I think it was the, the at the end of the trade-off there, Kid managed to knock Zack Sabre Jr. down before Jr. popped back up and returns to sender. But that moment was just so good because, again, we weren't, Gabe Kid is just in a perpetual state of ready to go. 
But we were seeing in this tournament, and especially in this match, just that wide range of emotion that he goes through throughout the matches. This was so good. It was so solid. I was pleasantly surprised with the end because <laughs> I did expect I did expect Kid to pick up the win on this one. So I'm pleasantly surprised that uh, Zack Sabre Jr. managed to uh, put the big dog to sleep. And with this win. Zack Sabre Jr. guarantees himself first place in a vlog. So this man doesn't have to wrestle until the semifinals. Hey. Because if Naito and Evil both get to 12, he has wins over both men. So he is guaranteed first place. And anybody else would be behind him in points. So Yay. Let's so go. So it doesn't matter what his last day, if he wins, if he loses, if he draws, he is number one. Uh, so we move on. Main event of the show it is Shingo Takagi versus Evil. Togo immediately getting involved right from the beginning, just grabbing at Shingo's foot. And I was like, oh, god damn it. Uh, like, like as he was coming into the ring, and Evil boots him off the apron, and the ref decides, "I'm gonna ring the bell." Like, just like, okay, at least, okay, doesn't really work that way, but okay. And up, they end up fighting on the outside. Um, yeah, I guess a home run shot to the the chair on Takagi's neck. I wouldn't really like that. I, I, I the match wasn't bad. There's just a lot of bullshit in this. Uh, the Bushi showed up and attacked Shingo Takagi, and everybody's like, "What?" And then Bushi he fell. Up. That should yeah. have been our first sign that he fell. Bushi doesn't fall. <laughs> and Bushi shows up to fight off Bushi, and it's revealed it's Kanemaru as who Bushi. fell because Bushi doesn't fall. B Bushi Maru. <laughs> Kana Ushi. Kana Ushi, yeah. <laughs> um, that happens. They, uh, uh, Hiromu gets involved here, um, but they end up uh, triple teaming Shingo because they got rid of Hiromu and Bushi. They, yeah, get, they get Hiromu in the balls. Yeah, they get dick to dick contact to uh, Takagi, but Evil only gets two. Darkness falls, is hit. Evil only gets two again. Shingo fights off. Everything is evil. It's a big lariat. Shingo with elbows. Made in Japan is reversed into everything is evil, then reversed back into Made in Japan. <clears throat> but as he goes for the pin, one, two, Togo starts ringing the bell, which distracts the referee, and, which I don't know why, because to your job, you stupid red shoot bastard. Um, <laughs> Let's be honest. If he, if he, he didn't have the three count, he had to punish the who he thought was Abe. It's not Abe. Yeah. Abe also got hit in this one. Yeah, I uh, can't. Yeah, well, can, every every evil match Abe gets hit. Come on, or whoever's there. If Abe is not there, he hits that guy. It's too. always Abe. Always well, sometimes Abe. it's another guy though. But it, but he he hits him. Even if it's not Abe, he still hits him. Uh, Kanemaru comes in to shove Shingo in into the ref, taking him out. Uh, Enziguri Kanemaru takes Hiromu and Bushi out. He gets the whiskey bottle to the head. Evil tries. Everything is evil, but it's stopped. Magic Killer is then stopped by Hiromu, but Kanemaru takes Hiromu out. Kanemaru misses Shingo and gets the Santori surprise to evil. Then Kanemaru ducks the Bushi miss, with Bushi miss evil in the face. Uh, and Hiromu drop kicks Kanemaru out of the ring while Bushi hits the Bushi rocket to the little dick on the floor. Shingo then follows up, pumping Bomber to Evil, picks him up last of the dragon for the win. <laughs> uh, yeah, we needed this mainly because yeah. we needed we needed House of Torture to fail, um, yeah. especially against Los Angeles. I I love that. Evil took not one but two shots to the face before losing. Love it. First the whiskey, then the mist. It was just perfection. He got double facial, you know? He did get too much. 
<laughs> he did. He did indeed. Yeah, a good win for LIJ. I, I'm still endlessly disappointed to not see complete camaraderie happening with the factions. But, like, at least Ren Narita didn't go out there as well. Because yeah. then, well, then we would have had to see Suji, and that would have been nice. But um, I would like to see LIJ continue to be a little bit, like, start to show a bit more camaraderie. Because they were, they were very much before, they were, they were more bonded when Evil and Sonata were still a part of the faction. I feel since the exit of Evil and Sonata and the join era of, of Shingo and Titan and Yodisuji, I feel like there's less backup coming out. So what you're saying, Evil was the glue of LAJ. Yeah. No, uh, Sonata. Sonata. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just like a, a certain promotion here who lost their glue. Yeah. R.I.P. T.J. Cannon. Whoa, what happened to T.J. Cannon? He's not here. Uh, don't say R.I.P. <laughs> that man is still alive. As far he as I is, know, he's still he is, but he's, he's not out here. We're asking where the glue is, and the glue's not here. Don't say that. That is The glue is kicking ass out east. It is true. He's, he's, he's kicking ass in central Canada and Manitoba. So yeah. Sure. I mean, that's further east than us. It is. So, point totals. Alone in first place. Officially first place for the rest of the tournament in A block. Zack Sabre Jr. with 12 points. Then you have Evil and Naito both with 10 points. Then you have Shingo Takagi, Great Okan, Sanada, and Jake Lee all with 8 points. So, again... Second and third place are still up for grabs. I think Evil, mm -hmm. though, has tiebreakers over a few people here, though. So I think Evil is might be guaranteed third place. Um, Let's hope not. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, but with Gabe Kidd, Shota Umino, both the six points eliminated, and then Kyle Newman was already eliminated with four points. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What a tournament. Yeah, a great tournament. And I already saw night 14 and that I haven't picked a match of the night for yet because it's a whole show is pretty good. I'm going to I'm, I'm going to be watching the first day of the Stardom five star Grand Prix after this. And then I'm going to watch oh, yeah. Uh, day 14. Yeah. Yeah, we got all of that, too. Plus, we have a Mario Gold show so much, so much, so much, so, so much, so, so, Let's so much. Let's get her done so we can go watch so, so much. So much. <laughs> so much. So much. So much. <laughs> oh, goodness. Crazy cupcakes. Well, we have come to the end of another crazy cupcake edition of Indeed Japan. Puro a review. Uh, <laughs> You can oh, find man. me on the X at that Canada guy, TikTok, Instagram, and threads at that Canada dude. You can find us on our Facebook page, Andre M. Melba Wrestling Talk. You can also find me in the comic section, comic comment section of the Bam Weekly Show, which will be changing very very soon. So go over there and get part. It'll it'll still be there, just under a new name. So go mm -hmm. check that out. Uh, you can also find me over on twitch.tv slash our local establishment this coming Wednesday, where I will be doing an uh, MCU rebound with my boy, uh, old Ed. We'll be talking about the Ant Man movie. So, that, and then if you want, go check out the video we have currently just dropped on the uh, OLE YouTube page. Uh, check out our review of everything that came out of D23. Uh, all the information came out there. We talked about that. We talked about the Agatha trailer. We, we, we Secretly watched the Daredevil trailer. We secretly watched the Fantastic Four footage. We talked about a bunch of animation stuff. Go check that out. Everything coming out of D23. And also, we'll make more big shout out to our boy Mike the Ref at youtube.com slash backbreaker videos. I'm casting all of our stuff. Uh, I'll bring some stuff up about a week to a week and a half after we drop it on our channel. So go check us out over there. 
If you want to see Mike live, go to twitch.tv slash Mike the Ref for his AW Watch Long 3 Wednesday, Saturday, and pay per view Sunday. And also, don't forget, and if he plays video games every other day of the week. So go check him out playing video games. And if you're bringing up replays of that, youtube.com slash at backbreaker underscore game where you get stuff from him, Mr. PJC, this little guy right here, Rick Jules, and frequent guest. Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. We love Kayla J here. We do. We do. Melba, where can they mm -hmm. find you? If you're wanting to follow on Melba, you can follow her on the X thing at Collins Melba. You can follow her on everything else Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Mastodon, and Blue Sky at Melba Collins. You can also find me on our local establishment programming, Japanese Wrestling Update with this guy, every Friday at 8 p.m. Mountain Time, unless it's not. And then we will let you know on social media. I believe this week we are going to be live. don't think we have anything going on. Yes, yes, we're going to be live, 8 p.m., which is good because we're probably going to have a lot of ish to talk about when we get there. So stay tuned to our socials to find out more about that. You can also find me on Astro Bizarro's YouTube channel where we do our show, Ladies Wrestling Showcase. <laughs> Shout out to the lovely Astrid. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about the natural, you can go back to our local establishment. See the um, interview done by Mark Tox with that beautiful lady. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be there doing that on Monday at 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. You couldn't let Astrid have that, could you? You had a jacket. Back to Astrid. Astrid's interview is on there. So go check that out first before you go check this guy out. And you can also catch me on there in the 17th. Um, yeah. My, mine's going to be better than, than Mel's for sure. <clears throat> I'm joking. I'm joking. If you're wanting to watch New Japan Wrestling, we will leave a link in the description box below. It is njpwworld.com. Don't remember the kind of yen, but it works out to 1450-ish Canadian. Or shout out Sean Spears for 10 Canadian, just because we love doing the perfect 10. Still an amazing price to watch some amazing professional wrestling. <sighs> distraction if you're wanting to get a taste of what njpw has to offer you you can check out all their world tv title matches to see what they have to offer what else is free on there andre they have a match of the week every week yeah match of the week there's they got they got a free section with a lot of older matches for mm -hmm. some some great matches uh, from guys like Finn Balor when he was Prince Devitt. There's stuff from Kenny Omega, mm -hmm. the Bucks. So a lot of different people in the free session. Go check them out. And they have, okay. and they do have specifically have a free English section, which has English commentary on it and everything. So pretty much anything that has English commentary attached to it, you can find by clicking in the settings to switch it over to the English commentary. And there you have it. Andre, my trusted friend and colleague, do you have anything else to say to the beautiful people? Again, just thank you so much for joining us here. Uh, we really do appreciate all the support. Uh, please keep liking the video, subscribing to the channel, commenting down below. We love hearing from you. Uh, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can alert every time we drop. Or no, 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 no. Please don't forget to share us out to all your friends, family, and kooky little monsters who happen to uh, not who like to pick fights with pit bulls in their in the yards next door. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. Hello. Don't be like Koji. Don't pick fights with pit bulls. Yeah, those kooky <laughs> little monsters like Koji, you know. <laughs> and that being said, I am your Mabel. Over there is Andre. We will see you next time. Adios.